How's it going traders? It's uh, Kevin here aka Magic Trader from the community and um, I just wanted to put together a video regarding the uh, CFTC caught reports because I've uh, received a, a few messages over the last uh, month or so regarding uh, this report uh, with questions um, uh, wanting to know where I get the information, uh, how is this information put together, when is the information uh, uh, put on online, and how can you guys use this information to uh, put together higher odds trades. So, if you uh, take a look at the uh, the community under the caught reports that are sitting within the classroom heading, uh, if you take a look at that first link, you'll see that um, I broke down pretty much how I display the data and where I get the data from and what the cot report is and the 13 period average and, and how I use that uh, with the reports. But I figured I'd go a little bit more in depth um, and show you through a video, since videos are a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to learn from. Uh, where I get this information and how I put the information together into my spreadsheets. Okay, now I've been uh, tracking the data from the uh, reports uh, that are put online for I don't know about over three years now. Uh, ever since I first learned how to trade supply and demand, um, uh, my old teacher taught me about the uh, U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission and uh, told me about how all the large institutions are um, are made to uh, submit their positions for all the major currency pairs uh, as well as a bunch of other futures contracts. So I mean when I heard that I thought to myself I mean you couldn't have uh, put uh, a bigger brick of gold on a silver platter when I heard that I, I thought you know well listen if I know what the institutions are doing then obviously I have the edge um, to to make money in the markets because you know we've all learned through supply and demand trading that if you want to make money in the markets you have to do what the big institutions are doing because it's pretty much the supply and demand of the institutions that are moving the markets okay it's the institutions and it's also uh, commercial traders and we're gonna get into more in, in depth with uh, who commercial are what traders they are and what uh, the non-commercial traders are and who they are okay hopefully that makes sense to you anyways let's get down to this so if you go to Google and you typed in and you type in CFTC uh, COT report you'll get this uh, website. It's a government website. Uh, once a week they uh, they uh, post the data on their website. It's every Friday at 3.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, um, So figure out wherever you are uh, what time that is for you. Uh, but I know every Friday 3.30 p.m. the data is coming out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so when this data comes out on Fridays the the actual information that's in the report was submitted to them on Tuesday okay it's a really important thing to remember so the data that we're we're going to take a look at on this website was data that was submitted on Tuesday now I know a lot of traders will say well I need to know what the institutions are doing today so I can make decisions today and you know what that's not important and I'll tell you why because big institutions they are investing large amounts of money and they're not opening up positions and closing positions within one or two days they're opening up positions they're hedging positions and they're looking for a longer period of time and so with the use of you know our uh, time frames our monthly our daily our weekly we are also looking at uh, swing trading uh, and looking at opening up positions for a longer period of time. So we can definitely use this information to prepare us for potential reversals or continuations of moves. Now, obviously, 
the rules that we've learned in the community trumps everything okay because we all have learned that fundamentals really don't mean anything and it's all about supply and demand and then when you apply the rules to supply and demand then all of the, of the edge is on your side so knowing that I'm going to show you how I use uh, the caught data to make my trading a little bit more sharper and just to give me that extra bit of confidence when I open up a trade okay so let's take a look at this website this is the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission website and when you come to this website I'll show you what happens the front page looks like this so you can click on the button right here view the weekly report and then this page will come up and so I'm going to show you what I use and you you could take a look here and you'll see that there's you know uh, different sections here for uh, for different types of reports on different types of products but right what I'm looking at what I'm focusing on is I'm looking at the futures contracts and I'm only uh, interested in looking at the short format because the long format doesn't have any uh, other information in there that would be of use to me. So I go to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange section and I click on short format. And so if you take a look, you'll see this is the report. You get but you have butter, milk, non-fat, uh, dry milk, and I just scroll all the way down until I get to Canadian dollar, which is always the first one right here. Okay. So Canadian dollar and uh, you'll see these headers here you'll see non-commercial commercial and then you'll see total and then you'll see non-reportable positions so non-commercial are people traders who work for large institutions who are uh, speculating on the markets to make money with their decisions to either go long or short a currency pair or a futures contract okay well I should say I shouldn't say currency pair because this is all futures but if you understand the futures market you understand that uh, you know people can trade futures contracts on currencies and they're basically betting on the same direction that the future that the actual currency pair would be moving with one exception for instance when we trade the US CAD the US dollar comes before the CAD so we're not talking about the strength of the CAD when you're buying the Canadian dollar future you're betting on it going up because you're buying it but if you think the Canadian dollar is going to get stronger you wouldn't buy the US CAD you would sell it short that's because the US dollar is the currency before the CAD if it was the CAD slash US dollar then you'd be buying it okay so I hope that makes sense to you so let's uh, let's take a look here so what you got here non-commercial these are the, the traders who are looking to speculate on the markets all right so when you look at the long positions you see 35,000 in actual fact, because it's a futures contract, I switch these two numbers around. So long would be 51,000 and short would be 35,000. So obviously there's a long bias here. Okay. Then I take a look at the commercial and it's really important to look at the commercials because, you know, a lot of people say the commercial traders um, take up a larger quantity of the markets than uh, the non-commercials. And that's probably true because the commercial traders are large corporations um, institutions um, anybody any type of large institution or, or company that needs to hedge against a uh, cash position or a physical product that they have like for instance uh, let's say Coca-Cola has companies, has uh, head offices all over the world. And so their main office is in uh, the States and they need to pay employees uh, or contractors that are in Australia. Well, let's say they don't have a head office in Australia and they need to send some US dollars over there or exchange US dollars into Aussie dollars to pay employees well if the Australian dollar is getting stronger they wouldn't want to get uh, they wouldn't want it to cost them more to pay these employees or these contractors simply because the, the Aussie dollar has gone up in value so what they'll do is they will buy the Australian dollar contract and uh, when the time comes for them to pay their employees or pay whoever, 
If the Aussie dollar has gone up in value, they don't care that it's going to cost them more because they've made money in the markets. So they take the profits from the money that they made in the markets and they use that to offset the extra cost of paying. So that's pretty much how it works. And they take up a large percentage. So I take a look at that data and I take that data into consideration when I put the reports together. Okay. So I basically, every single week, I take a look at these reports. Uh, here's a Swiss franc. Okay, they got the uh, Mexican peso, British pound, Japanese yen, the euro, um, the New Zealand here, and uh, the British pound is around here too. And they also got the Australian dollar down here. Okay, so I take all that data and I open up this uh, spreadsheet that I've been tracking, um, that I've been using to track all the figures. Okay, so if you take a look at this spreadsheet, what you'll see is I have all the major currency pairs here listed on the side. And then I have the non-commercial. These are the hedgers, not hedgers, sorry. These are the guys speculating on a, a move to the upside or downside. And then I got the commercial. And these are the guys hedging, okay? So take a look. Let's take a look at the US dollar for an example here, okay? So on November 1st, which was a Tuesday, uh, this data was presented to the, uh, to the, um, to the, uh, to the CFTC and these were the figures that were submitted to them. They submitted 67,181 positions that were long the US dollar and they had 12,851 positions, contracts, short the US dollar. So what I do is I add those two so that I know uh, total exposure. How many total positions do they have for the US dollar? 80,000. Now I do some calculations from this 67,000 and this 12,000, the total being 80,000, what portion of that long position from their total amount is geared to the long side? Well, 67,000 out of 80,000 is 84%. And 12,000 out of 80,000 is 16%. Okay? And so if I take 67,000 and I subtract that 12,000, we're left with a net position of 54,000. So taking into consideration that they have some positions long and they have some positions short, overall they're net long. So that's the number that I'm really looking at. Okay, I want to know what are they net. Are they still long bias or are they still short bias, whatever the case may be. All right. Then I do the same thing for commercial. I look at commercial. So they're 6,839 long. And they're 66,000 short. Why are they 66,000 short? Well, they're, 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 they have such a large position short because they're actually thinking the U.S. dollar is going to go up. And so they don't mind taking a loss on that because they'll be gaining in other, uh, in other ways. Okay, so I do the same thing there. What percentage, percentage of that is, is long and what percentage of that is short? And then what's their net positions? Okay, now this is what I do. The difference. The difference is I take this plus figure here, this positive number, 54, and I add this negative number, which if you want to reverse it, it's a positive number. And so I take this number and take this number and I get a positive 114,000. So that's a better indication to me, looking at that number, incorporating all the major players in the market, uh, you know, what the sentiment is. Are they long biased or short? And right now we're clearly long biased, okay? Then what I do is I, I, I have um, this here, difference from the previous week. So I take a look at what was it last week. Okay, last week the total was 113,000. So what is it this week? Total is 114,000. What's the difference? Change right here, 1,000. So over the last week, the only thing that's changed is that they've added about 1,000 contracts long. What percentage of a change is that? About 1%. Okay, so I have this percentage change so that quickly I could just look at this chart and I know what's the biggest mover over the past week. Okay, so what you see here is all for the currencies. What you see down here is all for the, um, the uh, commodities. Okay, so that's just a breakdown of how I calculate the information. Now we're going to go to these other tabs that I have down here because this is where you know, getting this information, it's nice to look at a quick snapshot of what's happened over the last week. But what's really important for me is to look at what is happening now and what happened last week and what happened the previous week and the month before and the month before that. 
that way I have a better idea of what the institutions are doing okay how are they slowly maneuvering their positions so let's take a look at the US dollar okay so after I calculate this information I then take the data from this chart and I plug it into this chart and here is where I get to see what's going on all right so for instance I can see since August 2nd when the, the institutions had um, the, when the commercial non-commercials the speculators had 32,000 uh, positions or contracts long since August 2nd they've increased it uh, more than double to 67,000 all right and short positions they went from 14,000 to 12,000 so what does that tell me since August 2nd they've had short positions okay take a look here they've had short positions and then they in increased them here to about October and then after October they've been decreasing them okay so that tells me a story that tells me something they were increasing shorts during this period of time and then after that period of time during this period of time they were decreasing shorts so after I take a look at this and I see what's going on I bring up my charts all right I bring up my charts and I look at that time I look at the time and um, that was here so August 2nd to September 27th August 2nd to September 22nd so August 2nd to September 22nd August 2nd is about here right here to September 22nd so right here so we had a phase of consolidation right through here during that phase of consolidation shorts were increasing okay shorts were increasing during this phase here so price was coming down hit a flip zone react to the upside shorts were increasing and now shorts are decreasing through here and longs are increasing and longs have been increasing throughout this whole period right here so throughout this whole period longs are increasing shorts were decreasing here or shorts were increasing sorry here and then shorts were decreasing here so um, so th then I take my time and I look at the charts and I see okay well longs are increasing through this period and shorts are decreasing so it doesn't look like they are expecting another move to the downside if, if price was continuing to move up towards areas of supply and uh, shorts continue to be increased then I would be um, you know I, I'd be looking at that thinking it looks like they're going to be hedging their position because they're expecting some move to the downside so you know I'll, I'll get more in depth um, uh, possibly I'll make some more videos and I'll get more in depth with what I've come to learn about the institutions and how they hedge and um, you know when they hedge where price is when it's heading towards a fresh zone what are they doing there's a lot to learn it's taken me a long time to learn this and believe me I'm no expert I'm still learning this every single day every single time I do this report I'm always learning something new and um, so I, I'm just happy to share what I know uh, with everybody in the community and and hopefully it helps you to uh, to, to to be uh, you know uh, to be a little bit wiser with what the institutions are doing and you know if it gives you a little bit more confidence like it does for me then uh, all the better uh, for that so okay so let's get back to this report so this is what I do and I have all the major currency pairs here I take a look at the numbers and I see you know what uh, percentage of their uh, total portfolios geared to the long side 84 percent what percentage gear to the short side 16 percent so obviously you know that's huge uh, and I've posted this um, this institutional bias indicator up here because I've really come to learn that you know if there's a 50 to 59 percent uh, exposure to one direction that's that's not that's really not strong and I wouldn't bet money on uh, on a price going up if it was 59 percent um, exposure to the long side uh, once you get into the 60 to 69 range then uh, that long bias starts to really kick in 70 to 79 is a pretty strong uh, is a pretty strong bias but when you get to the 80s to 100s 
that my friends is is a very strong bias I've seen it over and over and over again you could pretty much bet your money on that uh, once we reach the 80 to 100 percent price is going to go in that direction uh, and if you got some room until the opposing higher time frame uh, zones you're, you're definitely going to be looking to to get into a position uh, in the direction of the trend so I posted that this has taken me a long time to come up with just you know time after time looking at the figures and, and watching the charts I've come to learn that this is a pretty good uh, indication of what direction uh, price is going to head into okay um, a few months ago I added another feature to uh, to the charts and so I, I want to show you that so one day I was doing some thinking about these reports and and I was thinking about how I've come to learn uh, how to spot the reversal of a trend before it even happens. And so I was, you know, doing calculations in my head. And for a long time, I was figuring out, you know, look, they're taking off longs or adding shorts. And typically, their longs aren't normally this big and shorts aren't normally... Um, uh, this small so it looks like they're they're changing the sentiment here and so I started working on coming up with a, a way to create an average that would be uh, somewhat accurate I mean there is no there is no Bible for this okay there is no manual that will tell me exactly uh, what works and what doesn't so it, this has pretty much been um, testing out different theories and testing out different figures to come up with something that I've come to learn is actually pretty reliable so I came up with a 13 period average okay a 13 period average basically calculates the last 13 weeks data and averages out to give me a number so for instance on the US Japanese yen I'm bringing up this example because I want to share with you something uh, as we know the US dollar Japanese yen was falling from the sky for the last few months and uh, let's just bring up that chart right now so we can take a look uh, US dollar Japanese yen has been falling okay all the way down here all these months straight down and so um, we knew it was hitting a three and six month area of demand and what typically happens from that area is price reverses okay but we want to make sure at least I want to make sure that that's gonna happen and that something else isn't gonna happen and I want to know when the institutions are starting to take off their long, their short positions when they're starting to add their longs and I want to know exactly how they do it how do they do it how many tests of a weekly supply zone has to happen uh, before they reverse price and so I've been paying attention to this for, for quite some time and I'm trying to learn as much as I possibly can. So uh, so what I've come to, to realize is that this 13 period average is pretty pretty uh, pretty accurate in uh, pinpointing when the, uh, the bias is, is beginning to shift. So let me show you how that works. So if you take a look, November's data, 37,000 positions to the long side, okay? And 81,000 positions to the short side. Now, you look at the charts and you're like, okay, trend is down. But what's important to, to remember here is that, okay, the trend is down, but take a look at the data. Right now, there's 37,000 positions to the long side. The average over the last 13 weeks was 32,000. So we are essentially above average for longs. And shorts is 81,000. The, th the 13 period um, average number was 86,000 so we are below average so if I told you look uh, price has been dropping on the US dollar Japanese yen but the institutions the amount of positions that they have to the long side is way above normal for this time period and the amount of positions that they have short is way below the average that they've had over many many months you'd say well that's interesting well if it's way below average and, and the longs are way above average then it looks like they're, they're they're switching their sentiment and you know what folks I knew that back in uh, I don't know what it was in August or September I was already seeing signs that longs were becoming more than average and shorts were becoming less than average I even saw the numbers creeping towards the average so when I see numbers creeping towards the average I start paying attention to see hey is the bias starting to switch here or are they just taking some uh, some profits and, and ready to to reload 
that's for another day, another topic. We'll get into how I how I take a look at that and how I decipher those things. But I'm just trying to give you an understanding of, of how these averages work, how I use them to see early indications for price uh, creating a reversal, and and so forth. Okay, so let's take a look here. Right here, this uh, we had a, a daily wow that price reacted to, and now we're attacking this weekly supply zone again for the second time. I've put some arrows here on my chart because I'm expecting price to break through this area, um, and I was uh, I was looking to get into a position down here because although the weekly supply wasn't broken, giving us a um, uh, uh, a trend in consolidation on the weekly chart and allowing us to take longs looking at the data the data was telling me they're going to reverse price so I was looking for an entry down on this this range where price was bouncing price was bouncing 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 okay when we start to get a range of, of, uh, of price here what I do is I take a look at that area from that date to that date and I take a look at the data and I see what they're doing is they're increasing longs and they're taking off shorts so then the obvious uh, plan of action is to to get in down these areas to open a position down these areas and ride it to the upside and you know if price hits this weekly supply and then it drops down and goes back up and it just continues to consolidate as long as the data supports the idea or supports the fact that the institutions keep on taking off their shorts and they keep on adding their longs I'm gonna hold that position and I'm not gonna be nervous I'm gonna wait, wait out the, 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 the bumps in the road or, or, or through the waves until the final push upwards uh, takes place okay so that's how I use this information and apply it to the charts and apply it to my own analysis and uh, you know uh, how I find my entries into uh, in, into these um, these pairs. So recently, um, I've changed my mode of trading. I was trading the monthly, weekly, daily, and so if all the time frames were down, I had to wait for the weekly to break for me to go long. Uh, but now what I am doing is I'm trading the weekly, daily, and four hour. So in essence, uh, all I have to do is wait for the daily to break trend for me to take positions uh, counter trend. And uh, I'm more eager to do that when I have data like this uh, to support me. Okay. So uh, I think I've covered the essentials that you need to know when you take a look at my uh, reports that I post online. Um, I, I think I think I've covered pretty much everything you need to know. Here's my report. Again, you can just go to the community, click on the classroom, and I have all the reports there. It it comes up looking like this. The latest one I did was uh, was last week, and it's for November first. You click on that link, and I just give a little bit of a, a breakdown of what's happened. Volatility alert. I just post there what what data is going to be coming out the 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 week the following week so that you're aware and if you're trading that currency pair you you can expect some volatility from that pair uh, and then I have the data there so you can take a look at a nice screenshot of my uh, spreadsheet and you can see all the data there then I give the uh, the index here so you know uh, what these numbers uh, typically mean what kind of a bias and then I break it down I have the bigger picture like gold bigger picture three month uh, CP demand zones in control now and price is rallying up hard as we see long bias move from 55 percent of the portfolio to mid 80s okay that's strong information there we hit a higher time frame higher time frame CP demand zone and the the cot reports are showing us that the institutions used to have a 55 percent of their portfolio geared to the long side and you know during this period of consolidation at this higher time frame demand zone it's gone up to 80 percent what does that tell you they're planning uh, to move up they're offloading shorts loading up on longs and they're keeping it in consolidation until they're finally loaded up and then they'll, uh, they'll they'll shoot price up like a rocket so I'll continue doing the reports like this breaking it down so you can uh, you can read through and see all the data um, the overview section is just basically breaking down what happened over the last week uh, so you can have uh, a better indication of uh, what's currently happening and um, 
and so yeah so that's basically the breakdown I hope this video was helpful uh, if you have any questions just shoot me off a private message uh, like I said I might start doing some more videos in the future uh, breaking down each report on a video like this if you guys find it helpful I'll put in the extra time to do so uh, again uh, I'll, I'll put in the extra time because you know since I've been doing these reports for myself and now for the community uh, over the last uh, year or year and a half I've learned so much and uh, I've come to realize that you know practice makes perfect the more you effort and time you put into something the more you learn from it and the better it makes you at whatever you're doing so if it's good with you guys and obviously if I get the blessing from Alfonso I'll definitely start doing uh, some videos uh, weekly and I'll post them in uh, my section of the community here under the uh, under this heading and uh, I'll break down the data, look at the charts, and uh, yeah, give you a little bit more insight as to what I'm seeing, uh, you know, with the knowledge and experience I have uh, after breaking down these reports for the last three years. Like I said, guys, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not perfect, but I do the best I can. And, uh, you know, I, uh, it's a learning experience for me. And hopefully I'll get a lot better and I'll be able to pass on all this knowledge uh, uh, over to you guys. So, again, Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, until next time, trade well.